Now we can begin the shading process. If I take the point cloud and apply a material to it, right away I'm going to open up a render tree. So I'll replace the ice tree that we've been using with a render tree. And I'll rename the material to my steam material. Right away I know that I'm not going to be using the uh, typical surface shader, so I'll actually delete the cook torrents that's provided for me, by the one that I applied to it, and I'll replace it with a particle volume uh, node. Now remember that when you connect this node right away, all you're going to get is a volume that represents the particles. So you're going to get a box that represents the bounding size of our particle cloud, and it's actually very close to what you see as our bounding uh, cube to represent the extents of the cloud. So to actually use this uh, cloud, we'll go and plug in a density node. So this will allow us to cut the uh, cloud form out of our bounding box. So I'm going to use the density output to connect to the volume cloud's density input. And now we should have something that more closely resembles our, our effect. There we go. So now we're starting to get an actual cloud. The first uh, control that you might want to affect in this case is the lookup table, which we've used in many tutorials now. This is going to really determine the quality of the particle simulation, the amount of detail we can get out of it, as well as the uh, render time. And if I start by using a fairly large lookup table, we'll see what sort of compromise we can get with quality. So let's say I raise the cell size to 4. Our render time is going to improve quite a bit, but we also lose a lot of detail in our particles, and this might not be uh, appropriate for something like uh, steam. So I'm going to probably have to use a small cell size. So I'll take a cell size down to, let's say, 1. So there's a lot more blending of the particles towards the edges. Might even take it down a little lower to 0.5. At some point, if your render takes too long, you'll actually uh, throw an error to mental ray and it'll promptly just kind of kick you out. So if you set a low enough cell size, you'll, you'll know. You'll actually get a warning in your uh, script editor as well. Basically, you're allocating too much memory. And you can actually increase your memory limit to prevent any sort of crashing or problems. Of course, this is providing, of course, that you have the memory. So one of the main controls we want to look at when we're dealing with something like steam is the density of the steam. And I'm going to increase the density on the particle volume cloud. If I access the density uh, tab, the global density can be set uh, under the density uh, parameter heading. And if I lower the overall density, not surprisingly, we get a lowering of opacity on the point cloud. If you increase the contrast, so basically imagine that each particle is shaded uh, with a ramp from the center of the particle to the edge. And if we keep increasing the contrast, you'll notice we can kind of fill in a lot of these gaps here. Kind of thicken up the point cloud a little bit. So we're basically giving more, more of a constant color to the entire particle rather than uh, a fade off. So as I increase contrast amount, I'll typically lower the density to create the softness to the effect and the opacity to the effect that I need, yet maintaining the, uh, the structure of, of the steam. So I'll increase my contrast amount some more. There we go. And I'll, again, lower the density. If I need to increase the number of particles because I don't have enough definition here, that might be something viable as well. One of the other things you can do is rather than using the global density, so let's say I, I have the density quite high. I think actually the default was maybe around 60. It's getting a little carried away there. Another way that you could lower overall density is on the particle density node. When you're dealing with low density objects like smoke, there's a per cloud or gradient density slider available to us on the particle density node. So if I lower this, the effects are very similar to what we would uh, find on the particle volume cloud. So 
So as far as controlling uh, the opacity throughout the actual particle itself, through the birth and the death of the particle, we can even bring in a particle function curve gradient to help us control the overall um, per cloud gradient. So I'll take the particle gradient function curve and use it to drive the density of the effect. And if I double click, you'll notice that by just moving the function curve values, in this case nothing much happens, but I'll lower this one here, and we should be able to remove some of the density down low. could also be that we don't have enough density and of course uh, I'm not even outputting density as a color here so actually I should probably do that there we go and this should start to have an impact now that's a very small measurable setting I'll reduce the global density a little more or maybe even remove some of the contrast as well as lowering the density. Let's see if I can't get this to be a little thinner. Another thing that we could do is map into the color of our particle density by applying a gradient to our uh, to our cloud. The gradient, of course, would not have a huge range of color. Maybe just a simple black to white or a medium gray to white. But it'll add a bit more breakup to our effect. Okay, if I get in a little closer, I'm going to smooth the effect out by making one final adjustment on the volume cloud. You'll notice that there's a lot of high frequency noise and that can be eliminated by raising the marching settings. This is like a smoothing algorithm that will soften all of the noise in your point cloud. And it's something that can take a little bit of uh, additional time to render. So it's one of the last settings I'll usually apply. And if I truck out a little bit to get a context for the scale of my smoke and the scale of the robot, or the mech. Okay, so this is representative of the largest plume I'll have. I get a fairly uh, transparent uh, plume of smoke. I might need to go back in and raise the density a little more. So it's a little more visible. But I think overall that looks, uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll go in and lower our contrast amount a little more. And on the ice tree, I might add some more particles. So if I jump back into the ice tree here and increase the number of particles to say 250, we'll end up with a denser cloud and more ability to control that cloud through the render tree. So the effect should be brighter. So we need to compensate for the twice the number of particles And actually, in this case, it seems to have done more good. I'm actually getting more definition to this, uh, to this steam effect. I probably need to increase the brightness of the particles, though. They're a little too dark. Let's see if we can raise those colors a bit. Here we go, just brightening those values a little more. Also, in the overall color tab of the particles, we could raise the ambience intensity, which is going to be a self-illuminated value. Usually, we'll use this in uh, the fire or the explosive effects, but we can also use this value to really uh, pump up the intensity of our, uh, of our shading. We could also take down the diffuse intensity, as steam is more of a, a vapor rather than uh, a solid, so we can more rely on the shading of the ambience 
than on the shading of the diffuse.